All right, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different, and that is to kind of try to catch you up to real time. So if things go according to plan, which is rare in this sort of environment, uh, this video will make it live tonight. And I keep staring the camera at this uh, electro operator here because this is what I'm going to be practicing on so that when I get the agrobacteria, um, which is kind of expensive, I can be reasonably sure it will work. But we're gonna practice with putting the Spanish plasmid uh, that we're gonna be putting into, into the fungus, we're gonna practice putting that into E. coli because the procedure is basically identical between E. coli and agrobacteria. And so the hardest part about electroporation and the little bit of testing that I've done so far is preparing the cells uh, to, be, to be shocked. Preparing competent cells, as they say. And these are the cuvettes. And what happens is like, we'll put the bacteria in that little gap along with some DNA, and that'll go in here. That'll go into this little machine, this little thing, slides into here. Those two contacts make connection with these two electrodes. And then this whole thing is just a very uh, large apparatus that just simply shocks the, shocks the, uh, the cells. But you have to prepare prepare the cells to get shocked. And uh, that can take a while. And you have to basically make sure that the cells don't have any salt in them. Because if they do, this uh, when, the, when you shock it, it can make this spark or explode. It has exploded for me before. <laughs> um, and that will that will kill the experiment. It will kill the cells and waste the DNA. And the agrobacteria is kind of expensive. I'm gonna be getting, I haven't decided if I'm just gonna get three vials for 150 plus $50 shipping or six for a little over $300 plus shipping. So I could basically convince one vendor to sell me a half order to help save on the costs. But I think they only send me three aliquots of the agrobacteria. So I don't have a lot. And one of them I'm probably going to just streak onto a plate. So I have some that I can always play with. Uh, but they come electro component, uh, electro competent already. So I don't really need to worry about prepping those. So, and I have some brand new cuvettes and it should all be fine. But I wanna, I wanna go through the process and, and get it down really well. Kind of like I did with E. coli and heat shock. Just practice it a bunch of times. So that when push comes to so shove and I have the expensive cells here, I'll be able to shock them. So, we're kind of, I'm kind of starting with these two papers here. One of the hard things about preparing electro component cells is pretty much every protocol you read will require that you uh, have a refrigerated centrifuge and you keep every piece, like uh, the cuvette, the cuvette, the cells, keep them all refrigerated. And that's kind of difficult. I don't have a refrigerated centrifuge. Those are really expensive. But there's this paper from, let's see, 20, 2015, 2016 that is basically saying that if you keep the temp the cells at room temperature, it actually increases the transformation rates, which is like, wow, counter to everything, <laughs> counter to everything else that I've read. Um, and so I'm gonna be testing this out. I'm gonna test this out. I'm gonna like try to do everything at room temperature and not uh, freeze, not, not cool down anything. And I'm probably not even gonna add DNA to start with. I'm just gonna see like, if I put it through the process of washing the cells and shocking them, um, do, do the cells continue to live? 
So that'll at least tell me like I'm not killing the cells. Then I also have this other protocol here. And the only th the main thing that this one is really telling me is like, okay, so normally, normally when I prepare cells, I'll like, I'll, you'll grow them out. This is some DH5 alpha. You'll grow them out in some LB here, LB media. The problem with like growing it out in the LB media, well, it takes a little bit of time, but also like that media has salt in it. And there are other LB media recipes like the Miller modification, which uses less salt and should help with transformation rates. But there's still salt in there and that requires like all these different washing steps and every time you wash the cells you're looking at like a 15 minutes for each wash and some of the protocols call for like washing it three times three or four times this basically says no 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 don't grow those cells out with um in in liquid culture grow a lawn on a plate i think i I think I have a plate that has a lawn and bacteria on it. We'll see. This this has been here for so long, it's like completely dried out. But like imagine this had like a whole lawn of bacteria on there. Rather than growing it out in liquid culture, you can put it on the plate and then just use a loop and take some of the fresh, fresh growth off of the plate. And you can use that. You can wash it once and then electro parade it. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna try both. I'm gonna see like, can I, can I grow some cells and prep them at room temperature? And yeah, can I do that and shock them just like I would if I was doing a real uh, transformation protocol? Can I shock them and keep the cells alive? I think that's like a first good test of electroporation and like making sure that I don't waste any DNA. And I have plenty of plasmin, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. But before I do any of that, I basically have run out of of plates. I have like four LB plates left. And then I've got a whole bunch of bioprospecting stuff coming up that I'm gonna be doing. And I used to keep, these are like antibiotic plates. I have like, I have some in here, but I'm gonna make some more. So today is really gonna be about making some plates. And then tomorrow I will streak some DH5 alpha, see if I can grow that lawn. And then maybe by the end of the week, I'll be able to experiment with shocking some of those cells and just seeing if they live. And if they live, that's a good sign because that means that, okay, I can move on to like putting in actual DNA. Okay, uh, so let's get to making some plates. Okay, I have got all of the materials out for making some plates today. And I did some calculations here using this uh, spreadsheet that I've created in my DNA barcoding tracker. It's got all the media proportions and then how much I want to make and then how much I need to use for each of those. So I'm going to make you know, each plate that I have. I use nine millimeter plates. They hold about 30 to 35 milliliters per plate. And I usually don't like to make more than this. So I'm going to make 400 milliliters of LB plates and 400 milliliters of MEA, malt extract agar. And I'm gonna use a 1.75% ratio of, of agar. 2% is pretty common. And that'll make the media pretty stiff. Um, in some cases, it, it's helpful to have softer media. So I just make it just a little bit less than the 2%. But, um, so I have these two flasks, which are marked 400 milliliters. So that should make it a little bit easy. Uh, for me to determine the amount. I have some whey boats here. Here's some agar powder. Um, I have this organic dry malt extract that I use for the MEA. And then for the LB, I think uh, I have this this LB broth that's, I haven't used this yet. I wanna get through this uh, this Odin 
LB broth. So I'm gonna use this. So let me get the camera set up and mix all that together, get it in the pressure cooker, and then pour some plates. light malt extract but this stuff is uh, does not like moisture if you get a lot of moisture in it then it will become thick and clumpy and difficult to work with right now it's very smooth and powdery so to store it I used to keep this in a Ziploc bag but that wasn't really good enough so I'm gonna try storing it in uh, <laughs> in this jar Try not to spill it all. And then I'm gonna put these desiccant bags on top. And I'm gonna seal it. So that's how I'm gonna store my light malt extract. And uh, hopefully that keeps it nice and dry. Okay, I've been warming up the pressure cooker. I've got it on full blast. And I know it's ready because it's starting to steam um, out of the pressure relief valve. And so let's go ahead and load it up. So I'm gonna take my MEA, put that in there. Hard to do this with one hand. So I'll seal this out and then we will uh, pressure or pressure cook it for 15 minutes at 15 PSI. Um, I'll also go ahead and turn on the flow hood so that we can start getting some clean air and um, I'll start cleaning this area. I'll pull down some plates that I have stored up here and go ahead and get them queued up so that we can pour the plates.
able to pour about 16 plates of the LBE and 16 MEA plates, which should last me for quite some time for, uh, certainly for my electroporation experiments. What I'll do now is uh, I actually moved them from over to the hood to here because this table is actually flat and even and that table is actually bending down towards the middle because of the weight of the flow hood and so to get even plates <laughs> i have to move them not my favorite thing to have to do but it works so i'll let these set up and then i will uh, recover them in the sleeves that they were in for storage and either pop them in the fridge or just leave them at room temperature they'll work just fine and then what we'll do tomorrow is i'll go ahead and Go ahead and start a liquid culture for the LB of E. coli, DH5-alpha, so that we can create a lawn for the following day and run some electroporation experiments. So I will see you tomorrow.